So I've beaten True's Zenoiran twice. Once just by playing it normally, and a second time doing a challenge run. The challenge run, I did not use Valor skills, I did not use items. If any unit at any time hit zero stamina, I would immediately have to rest, putting it in danger. I banned the secret shop, like the black market, I banned the angel shop. All items for the angel shop I didn't use, all items from the secret shop uh, the black market I didn't use, and all items for the Colosseum I didn't use, so no Colosseum shop. I also didn't do most of the maps. I did like half of the treasure maps just in the early game. I didn't do any of the late game ones. Uh, so here are the teams that I used for that playthrough. These two I was forced to kill because I didn't have Valor skill access. So I wasn't able to cleanse their mind control. So I had to just straight up kill them with this team. <laughs> but even... Oh yeah, I also banned all mounted units. Any unit that has a horse or a griffin or any kind of mounts was banned for balance purposes. Now I could have banned the Elven Sisters too to balance it a little bit more. I probably should have done that. But I wanted to see... Oh yeah, I know what you're thinking. Elaine's not banned. Elaine, he only can promote it to a horse, so I allowed it. I just made it so he couldn't be party leader. So after doing this challenge run, uh, where do I think the game is at? Um, I think the game has some issues. I don't think... there are things that can't be fixed. I think mostly the way that combat works feels kind of weird in that you have two versions of the game. You have this battle here, like not this particular battle, but you have this, like th this uh, map, right? Like these maps, the macro part of the game where you have units on a board. Uh, each unit contains like a, you know, a bunch of characters that all do different things and try to do some specific thing. And you have to take some objective and there are things like, you know, archers on towers to kind of punish you for pushing to kind of slow you down and ultimately it's on you to push through to the boss and kill it right like that's the overall goal of most of these maps which is fine uh, but you take objectives you have to deal with archer spam you have to deal with their valor skills which can be mostly the thing that provides a challenge or not even a challenge but like feedback i think this game has this problem once you create super units the cat's out of the bag and the game is basically over. Once you understand which units are good and why, and you give them the right abilities and setups and put them with the right other units, you just create super units that just demolish everything, and it requires zero critical thinking. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Go on. We kill that with taking minimal damage. We Actually, we don't kill that, but I'm sure we could change it to kill it. Change our formation around. We kill that. We kill this. We almost kill this, so I probably just need to switch some things around. Now, I have a setup for the final boss right now. Yeah, so I, like, my build isn't even set correctly. I literally just changed everything about this team, and we're missing some accessories. I changed everything this team was doing to kill the final boss. So if I just switch back to my normal, my, more, my normal setup with this team, we should be killing everything in a single round of combat. But you can see that it doesn't really matter what the enemy has. If I create a good team comp, I win. I just have to keep moving my pieces along the board until we hit the boss and then kill them. So it's not even so much that there's like tactics where you need to set up combos or you need, you need to have good positioning. It's more of once you create a super unit, and this is a super unit that was built in a challenge run. So imagine how much worse it gets if you allow anything. It gets much worse, but it just gets to a point where your units just become so powerful they can kill everything they encounter and the only time that isn't true is if you have like bad RNG, like maybe there's like three range assists that hit you and then like two of your backliners just die from range assist. You could always use an item, of course, so you could use like, uh, like wind fairy charm and stuff like this. But beyond that, if that's the only thing that can kill you, you just walk the maps down. And I think that's the problem with the game right now. It's like once you make your super squads, you just beat the game. Like, there's nothing that the AI can do about it. They don't have counterplay. They don't have good builds, really. Like, let's look at some of these enemy builds they're running. They have basic weapons that have no effects. Uh, they use basic abilities. So, compounding curse, second action. So, like, this goes for uh, defensive curse by default, and then compounding curse. So, like, they basically just don't have loadouts that can even give you feedback right and the only time you don't kill them 
is usually when you have like a bad matchup or some weird interaction, but typically the builds that can beat teams beat every team. So like the best builds, the best units, and the best team comps will beat everything. So when you're fighting against people like enemy squads that are using just basic equipment and they don't have any like if these imagine if these were dove plumed like dove and raven plumed to like 60 initiative or whatever and then they have you know like fire curse and poison curse and then these use magic barrier and then some other ability or maybe they use like provoking sword to provoke one of your units to kind of mess up its attack and stuff like this. Like, imagine if they actually had more than just the basics. It would definitely present more of a challenge. You'd have to actually look at the enemy team comps and analyze them. Now, it could also just make maps take longer so that you still ultimately would just figure out how to counter them, but at least you would have to, like, calculate something. I think currently, right now, the macro calculation, like, moving things on the board, is minimalistic. The skill ceiling to like positioning and using trees and killing towers. It's really not that complicated. And I feel like most people get it after like three to four hours, maybe five hours of gameplay. But beyond that, I think the macro needs more to it. And the micro where you just have these overpowered teams that just like steamroll the enemies could be addressed as well. And I don't think they need to make every enemy squad really good. Like for example, these I think should be easy to kill the tower enemies because they provide a huge advantage positionally to all enemy combats so like if you encounter some kind of fight you just take chip damage unless you run some kind of counter to it so if a unit reaches these they should be able to easily kill them but i think uh, things on the actual defensive positions should be much stronger and there should at least be like one or two mini bosses in a group of like five like if there's five enemy squads at least like one to two of them should be a little bit better and have more interaction and counterplay than just basic skills like this team this team doesn't even make sense what is this team why would you stack three radiant knights with shamans this team is never going to do any damage <laughs> it's the only thing it will do is waste stamina and have you not kill best case scenario it's not going to kill anything unless you're super weak it can't even tank very well the front row probably not probably the front row immediately dies to certain things like certain row attacks especially like griffins and stuff so it's just, it's just a weird team comp that doesn't make any sense. Let's look at this one too. So two clerics. This one's a little bit more aggressive, but you can see they're just like stacking basic classes and then just like throwing two like supports in the back line. Like their classes, same thing with this. Like why would you have two wizards with three wyverns? There's no synergy. I mean, this can go, it's also prioritizing volcano instead of the more impactful thunderous strike, which is significantly stronger. So they, the enemies are like using super basic tactics that are dumb, that are typically bad. Oh my god, they're Tempest Diving. Oh wait, oh I'm sorry, I'm th I was thinking of Dragoon Dive, the charge attack. I was about to say, if they turn one charge attack, that's terrible, but no, they're just doing, they're just doing, um, what is it, Calm Attack. So they're, ju they're doing Calm Attack spam, uh, which is fine, but Calm Attacks typically are worse than, uh, and row attacks because a row attack can be used to hit three things whereas calm just hits two things so basic math but and then this team this team is <laughs> missing a fifth unit <laughs> for no reason uh what else they have a front liner that is not a front liner the land snacked and this thing is not a tank this is not a front line tank it's just not it's it's a, like a damage unit <laughs> so they're and they have three of these and then three of those land snacks and then the thing like they don't even have a proper setup they don't have support for that setup they just have like the bare minimum just like a bunch of units it almost feels like a lot of the enemy squads are just a bunch of units that are deployed i think we need a higher difficulty that has better enemy squads and maybe actual permadeath because <laughs> right now there's not actual permadeath right the permadeath is you lose a squad and you can use luminous corn ash to revive them so the difficulty of true's annoyer claims that there is permadeath but there actually is not as long as you have corn ash you can revive individual units or entire squads now you can buy more of it from the angel shop now i banned the angel shop which kind of put a limit on how much corn ash i could acquire but the only reason uh units even died especially in the end primarily was because i had to kill them to proceed because they were mind controlled and I, I was doing a valorless run. 
Uh, there were some other units that died occasionally. Usually it's to the arrow rain spam. So like the main thing that really gives you a challenge is range assist spam and arrow rain spam. And beyond that, you just make super groups that just push enemies down and just kill everything. And it's it can be fun to theorycraft super groups, but I think if they want this game to have like more longevity, they should make another higher difficulty or make Trues and Neuren harder. Either one of those would be fine, because we know they can make good teams if we look at the Colosseum enemies, where some of the Colosseum teams directly counter things like charge attack board nukes by putting in nope owls, which just dispel the impetus used to set off those board nukes. And we know that they can make these teams because there are other Colosseum teams that are actually pretty difficult to fight that have unique items. I think the issue fundamentally is that enemies just have generic equipments and generic tactics, whereas the player can be as specific as needed. So I can completely change every single aspect of my kit I can run hard counters to whatever strategy they're using as soon as I bump into something. And then once I look at a team and understand what its main tactics are and what its main shutdown like strategy is, I can switch everything around to get to a point where I beat that thing and kill it. And it is almost like this menu game. So like, let's run all this out of me. I'll give you an example. So I take 23 damage, which is negligible. But if I were to take a ton of damage and they were to take very little damage, I'm going to be spending a lot of time in menus just like thinking like, okay, what do they do? They stun me? All right, let's throw on uh, anti-stun shield and what else do I need? I need uh, less initiative because I'm already too slow or maybe we stun them. I can switch to like more damage or something or the wide pursuit build so that my damage comes out instantly on the back of a faster unit. That's typically what this unit was running. It's like earrings of pursuit. And then she had the wide pursuit ring or bracelet sorry outlaws and then for shields we just need something that gives uh passive points so i could run wing crest and then for swords we also want something that gives passive points which i think was not royal saber one of these wing crest blade so wing crest blade wing crest shield and now we can wide pursuit twice now we take less damage, actually. So that's just an example of switching equipment around and squeezing out a better result. And then maybe we can actually take no damage if I switch some positions around. Now we're taking more there. All right, what is he actually doing? Shadow Bite, move with most combatants. Still taking five. Uh, compounded Curse, first action, no. Defensive Curse, first action, still taking five. So you can just keep, like, playing with this until you get the result you want. Uh, we could get rid of... So actually one a simple thing I could do is just like remove this because I know they can't hit backline and then just throw this on and I have two heals. And weirdly we still take five damage. <laughs> Even though I have two heals. That's kind of funny. Try healing first. Now, now we take zero damage because she probably manually heals everything afterwards. But this is just an example of like basic min maxing, uh, menu maxing really. And then of course these are not, these do not have accessories. They're missing accessories. Uh, I actually beat the boss with like a few accessories unequipped just because I had to like pull things off to get the RNG in my favor But he could be put on like whatever like royal scarf and now he has high evasion uh, Then she could be put on something for initiative doesn't really matter or if we want You know some other equipment But this is really the issue with the game is that once you make these super squads worst case scenario You just have to switch some, some equipment around it takes like 10 to 30 seconds. Sometimes it takes longer if you have like a really horrible matchup against some team, but that's usually a fundamental issue with the team comp rather than like a player skill issue. So like if you have a bunch of ground melee units, like this team is ground melee units, and we fight into a flyer comp, uh, we can have problems. However, let's chill these really quick. If you use things like true strike, you can bypass that pretty easily. So like even though, all right, these are a bunch of flyers. So here's an example, right? So one thing I could do, uh, she could open with passive curse. Just put this on front row. See how the matchup looks now. All right, it's still pretty bad. So we can we can figure out a thing. Let me make sure he's on. Oh yeah, I took him off of uh, crit. He's on pursuit for killing the final boss. So he's usually on amber lens. That's why he's not doing as well as he normally does. So if we amber lens them, yeah, now we just kill them. <laughs> so like, here's like an example, right? 
just simple amber lens on your hard counter and now your hard counter is just completely nullified i think maybe that's part of the issue too where it's way too easy to just equip like a single item to just hard counter an enemy strategy that hard counters you and the hard counters in the game where it's like calves take more damage from flyers and armors take more damage from magic can usually be manipulated in a way where those advan those disadvantages don't matter at all and you can just counter them through equipment and through initiative fixing and through countering like specifically what the enemies can pull off and especially if you're just a faster team so like one of the main ways you win is just by using things like curse swamp rapid order and plumes to just be faster than the enemies initiative wise get a bunch of big attacks and stuns and blinds off shut them down kill more than half of them and then they just counter attacking with like one to two enemies so like that's really one of the things that contributes to steamrolling is just being fast and dealing huge damage and just nuking all their stuff down before they have a chance to really do anything in response i think early game the game is a little bit more balanced because there's more interaction you just have like squads of two and three once you start getting squads of five i think the complexity just spirals out of control and it just kind of becomes like my nonsense versus your nonsense except the enemies don't have no access to the nonsense so they don't give the broken builds that we get to use or the broken units that we get to use like this enemy these enemy squads are just a bunch of wyverns and that's fine but they're not really they don't even have passives they like i would be fine with them even just having like carnelian lapis pendant on most things but they have like an okay weapon and a kind of useless accessory that doesn't really do much they could have more interesting accessories they could have things that prevent stun they could have things that prevent blind they could have all sorts of things that are actually like interesting to fight so you actually have to like calculate out these fights a bit more but unfortunately that is not the case now it would make fights take longer i know what you're thinking that's going to make maps take forever you're probably right it will make maps take forever because you have to spend a lot of time calculating out each fight but if it's on the highest difficulty that's basically what you should be expecting every fight is like a mini coliseum fight uh, but that's it for this one i just want to talk about the difficulty after clearing the game twice on shrews and Neuron, once normally once in a challenge run uh, my experiences with both basically once i hit super units which was pretty much immediately the game just becomes trivialized so i do think the game has a lot of potential i know some people take criticism as negativity uh, that is not the case um I do think that they're going to patch the game because they already patched it. Like, they had a day one patch where they nerfed Wild Rush. So I have hopes that they will balance the game and possibly add a new difficulty or fix True's Annoyance. So it's actually hard. Either one of those things would be fine. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe, and I'll see you next one. Peace.